I'm here at Freestyle Yamaha uh, in Chichester. Great place, very nice people. They've got a cafe upstairs. Come down, have a look. There's loads and loads of bikes inside. They've got this in black inside. It's really nice, really, really nice. Anyway, I've never ridden an R6 before, so I thought, let's take one out and see what it's like. Now, as you know, I am six foot four, and yes, I am feeling a little bit cramped on this bike. Just because, you know, I'm not really of the average size. <laughs> However, I'm managing at the moment, it's fine. It is a very aggressive seating position, but then this is a very aggressive focused bike towards a certain type of use. Right, the first thing I wanna talk about, and I don't often talk about price, but I ha kinda of have to in this case, because it is 11,000 pounds. However, having looked into it, I can see where that money's gone. You know, you've got the R1 front end, well, at least the suspension anyway, You've got a magnesium swing arm, titanium um, valves. You have the electronic packages they put on it. All of these things really do cost a lot. This, this is where, if you refine something, the price has to go up. And it does seem like it is a very refined 600, which is good to see, because normally it's the 1,000 that gets all the attention. As you can tell, it has got a quick shifter. Good brakes too. Very good brakes. The ride is firm and a little bouncy, but again, it's a very focused bike and we are gonna have to forgive it for a few of the, the creature comforts not being quite as the same as a road bike because it is so focused to being a trap bike. However, my review is an everyday man's review is what's it like to just use normally without going completely loony on it and so far as i say it, it's it's comfortable it is small there is no doubt that it is a smaller bike and i'm a, a bigger chap and as i say this has got the same front end as an r1 which is fully adjustable all of the controls are on the top here and the rear shock is also fully adjustable those are really key things for a bike which is oriented towards a track bike because obviously you need to set the bike up for the rider and for the track, for the tyres, everything. But it does also mean that you can make your bike feel just like you want it to as an everyday riding bike. Because let's face it, most people who buy these probably won't take them on track. They will have fun with them in the country roads. But generally I think they will be everyday riders. Now, lots of people will take them on the track, obviously. I'm just being statistical about that. Just listen to it, though. So angry and aggressive. Okay, I need to find someone to pull over and have a look at this thing. Okay, so let's have a look at the controls. Your standard controls are all there. You know, high beam, low beam, indicators, horn, uh, your flasher light, pass light, sorry, um, start, stop. That's all sort of one thing here. Hazards. That's all your standard stuff. Then you've got extra buttons. Um, this is the traction control button, which is dedicated just to let you go up and down through the traction control. That, I think, is a very smart decision for something that is so focused to be a trap bike, to have a single button for that one thing. There's no going mode, then this, then that. It's just one thing. And on the fly, that's going to be a lot easier and safer to do than looking down and trying to find mode, etc. And then on this side, you've got the mode button, which is a one-directional switch. 
you got aggressive, I believe B is wet and standard. Revs, shift light, all your normal bits and pieces here. Uh, we've got gear position right there. Q, S to let you know that the quick shifter is on this bike. Yes, it has, as I mentioned earlier, it does have a quick shifter. Only up, not down, um, but it's got that on it. And then you've just got your miles an hour and, and, and you can go through and look at, you know, trip, trip to MPG. One thing I'll definitely note, even though this basically has a full tank of fuel, it feels so light. There's literally, there's nothing to it. Looks wise, I like it. It's elegant. I like the aggression on the front. I do have to say that the one I saw in the showroom in, in just black looked awesome. The silver and blue combination of colour, really like that and I do love the shape of this tail. Just the vents through it, everything, it's just, it looks good. I do like the tank on this. I love the shape of the tank on the R1, just it's more square. I love it, but that's that's nice. It fits in nicely with it. I say, I think it's a pretty good looking bike. Pretty standard rear sets, though. I imagine if you were taking this on track, you'd probably change those to a more adjustable set anyway. Um, the levers, very solid, nicely finished. Nothing wrong with those. The first thing that strikes you is just how high this thing revs. I mean, the red line's being shown at about 17, 18,000 RPM. It is a road weapon. And it's exactly why I've said, I like 600s. They can be everything that you need on the road. Uh, now I've been riding it for a while, even though, yes, it is small, or smaller than what I'm used to, I'm actually perfectly comfortable. I am lent over, but I'm not getting any wrist tape. I'm not getting anything like that, which is which is unusual. I, I don't. I normally expect to feel stuff like that. Right now, I can feel nothing. No engine vibrations. No road vibrations. Nothing. Just smooth. That's that's impressive. And this is what I wanted to find out with this review, not is it the best Apex Predator track bike, because we know it's very, very good, and I'm not the person to tell you what it's going to be like on track. Not many people can tell you how good this sort of bike is on sort of to its absolute peak. But what I can tell you as an everyday rider is, is it a pleasurable bike to ride? And it certainly is. It's fun, it's usable, it's, it's nice to ride at normal or more normal speeds. But what it's got up its sleeve is that just ridiculous RPM. And the pickup and speed from that is nuts. But that's good because it's still a 600, which means you're still getting, you know, more use out of the engine generally, and you're not getting into the extreme speeds. A U-turn up a very steep driveway with a bike with a very tight steering angle. It was easy enough. I think that shows testament to what the throttle's like on this. It's very, it's very usable low down. It's very good. Now you will notice I don't tend to use the quick shifter much. That's simply because I'm not in high enough rev to really need to use it. I don't, I don't need it at this point in time. Oh, there's a cyclist up here somewhere, so I'm trying not to go too quickly. But it's nice. It's amazing how good the ride is. As I say, it, it is firm, and it's a little bumpy, but it's very, very comfortable. Even through these country roads with you know, gravel everywhere, and lumps and bumps, and cars, and, and everything. <laughs> I think the 
key to riding this bike sedately is you just keep it up a gear. It can perfectly happily cruise along like that, 4,000 RPM or so, and it's still got the poke to pick itself up. I need to talk about these brakes a bit more. They are good. It's that perfect balance between a lot of power and usability. And that was only two finger braking by the way, so yeah. I've had a good ride around this bike now, and as I say, my conclusion is it is a very good track bike. People will be able to tell you that side of it much better than me, but as an everyday bike on the road, I thought it was gonna have a lot of flaws for its strengths on the track. And yeah, it's you know it's got a small turning circle. It's got an aggressive sink position, but that's more to do with the Starler bike. It's very, very pleasant to ride on the road. As I say, the ride, the smoothness, the brakes, the, the, the excitement you can have in the higher RPMs and yet still be completely usable lower down. It's, it's a good combination. What's also surprising is today is a warm day and this bike is going to be warm because I'm riding it but I don't feel too much of that being kicked into me. I mean, yeah, I can feel a little bit on the insides of my legs, but you compare that to my XJ6 and it's just, it's a different world. I get cooked on that thing. There we go. Back at freestyle. It's just off one of the main roundabouts as you go through Chester, you go through like two or three roundabouts. It's just here. You just take the track around the back and you're there. Well, after leaving this place earlier on, feeling a little bit perched on top of the bike and wondering how am I going to get on with it, what a change. I'm, I'm massively impressed of how comfortable I've actually found it and uh, just how usable it is as a normal bike and not, not just a track bike. It's very, very impressive. Great bike. Thanks to uh, Freestyle Yamaha. Uh, I'm going to leave some links to their social media and stuff if you want to keep up with them. But great people. And uh, thank you very much for lending me the bike for the review, and I'll catch you all next time.